What's the worst fear you have about booking a shore excursion? Probably that it's a waste of your time, money, or both. And today, I've got five shore excursions that I took that I instantly regretted up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RollerCoreanBlog.com. There have been a few shore excursions I've taken over the years that I would love to get my time and money back for. Shore excursions are a major part of any cruise vacation because the ports of call or cruise ship visits is really an extension of the overall trip. Each day you visit a new port, there's just enough time to get a taste of what that city or island or country has to offer. And I got to admit, it's one of the first things that attracted me to going on a cruise, being able to go to these amazing places, whether they're beautiful, exotic, interesting, cool, or a combination of all those really had a major draw for me. So the idea is you go on a cruise ship, every day you're whisked away to a different port of call and the opportunity to do something fun on shore. And most of the time, I have no problems. In fact, I've had usually good luck with choosing a tour as I've learned the sort of things I like and don't like to do. But once in a while, I run into a dud and realize I've made a mistake. Sometimes the issue is subjective because I personally don't care for the type of tour offered or something else just isn't my cup of tea. Other times I felt the tour just didn't measure up to expectations, but in any case, it left me wishing I had done something else. I think a lot of people struggle, quite frankly, with what tour to pick and which shore excursion would be right for them. So today I wanted to share examples of five tours that I took that were really big mistakes and why they were mistakes in that hoping that not necessarily you're going to avoid necessarily these five specific tours. Okay, there's five less out of the hundreds that you could possibly choose from, but more to the point that you're going to get some insight as to why these didn't work. So help you pick a better shore excursion for you and your family. Let's start with number one, and that is the Blue Waters Beach Escape in Falmouth, Jamaica. Ever since Royal Caribbean started visiting Falmouth, Jamaica, I've really struggled to find a great go-to shore excursion. I often get questions here on our YouTube channel about what to do in Falmouth and and to be honest, I still don't have a good answer for you. Part of the issue is found with this relatively new cruise port. And so there aren't a lot of attractions nearby, which means you need a long bus trip to get to the great stuff that's in Jamaica. On one visit in 2016, I thought to heck with spending an hour or more on a bus. We're just going to go to the beach and enjoy the Caribbean waters because how bad could it be? We tried the Blue Waters Beach Escape that I booked through Royal Caribbean, and it reinforced one of the most common issues a person can have on a tour booked through the cruise line an oversold and underwhelming experience. While the bus ride was short to the beach, it was exactly what I wanted, about 10 minutes, we found a ton of other tours that had already beaten us there, which left very little seating. Some guests who arrived after us had no chairs available and had to settle for beach chair mats until chairs were freed up by departing guests. The short excursion title says, An Exclusive Blue Waters Beach Escape, but clearly this was not as exclusive as one may have thought based on reading that. On top of that, the food offered by the beach's, quote, five-star chefs was also really underwhelming and pretty limited in selection. So the lesson for me here was to reconsider beach break shore excursions sold through the cruise line for the overselling aspect it brings with it. In the Caribbean especially, there are plenty of beaches in almost any port you're going to visit. So I'm best served by trying to find another way to visit one of the other less crowded options. All right, now, so piggybacking on that, that was a big oopsie, right? Let's move on to number two, and that is a day at Margaritaville. So another Jamaica mistake was to skip the tours altogether and just hang out at the Margaritaville in Falmouth. When you get to Falmouth, there is a port area in which there are shops and dining and whatnot. And one of those restaurants on there is a Margaritaville bar, resort, whatever you want to call it, in which you can go there and there's a bar and there's a restaurant. And there's actually a pool. And I thought, heck, this is the perfect alternative. We just tried to do a tour that took us not too long from the port, but it didn't really work out because it was oversold and all this. So we're going to do the opposite. We're going to hang out the port. It looks like a very nice pool. We'll have a great time. So the fact that there was a pool here was really appealing because there was plenty of chairs and food that we'll enjoy, even though something authentic or anything like that. At least we knew that it would be food that some of us would eat, right? And you know what? The day started off pretty darn good. We got to Margaritaville when we got off the ship found our spot, and there was no cost to enter the pool or use the facilities, and my kids at the time, they were pretty young at that point, really enjoyed the pool. Unfortunately, a lot of other people had the same idea that we did, and by mid-morning, the pool and the seating was super crowded. Being a Margaritaville, the food and drink were nothing spectacular, but also spectacularly expensive. The longer we stayed, the more I thought I could be enjoying the very similar experience back on the cruise ship for a lot less money. We eventually packed our things up and went back to the ship, but the lesson I learned here was Margaritaville is fine for a quick visit, but not a whole day stop. Number three on my list is trying to get St. John's on my own. 
Ever since I visited St. John on the U.S. Virgin Islands, I loved how absolutely beautiful it was and wanted to return every time. In fact, if you're listening to this, I'm here to tell you the most beautiful beach I've ever been to in the Caribbean is in St. John. St. John is a neighboring island right next to St. Thomas. It requires a short ferry ride to get over there. And in order to get to the ferry ride, you need to go to an area called Red Hook. Red Hook is not a really popular area because it's not near any of the beaches that are there. So among tourists, it's not that popular. And the issue is getting to there because it's far enough away, you certainly can't walk. You need a taxi of some kind. So my plan was to go to the ferry to nearby St. John and enjoy a day at one of the most beautiful beaches I've ever visited. We went to the taxi stand in downtown Charles de Malier, which is right where you disembark the ship. And we asked for a taxi to get us over there. Each taxi driver passed on us to someone else as they were unwilling to drive us there. For some reason, the taxis in St. Thomas are primarily these converted pickup truck buses, and the taxi operators all want to maximize every seat in the vehicle. So unlike, say, New York City, in which you get a taxi and it is your vehicle, here you are sharing them. And really in St. Thomas, the taxis in the form of a sedan, as an example, are really non-existent. So after literally 30 or 40 minutes of standing around trying to figure out someone who would take us there, we were told to board one of the buses that goes to Red Hook, except the bus that was not going to Red Hook. When I got on the bus, I asked somebody else, like, hey, where are you guys going? And they said they weren't going to Red Hook. It was going everywhere else but Red Hook. And basically the idea was they would take all those other people there, and then they would take pity on us, I guess, and drop us off in Red Hook. So clearly the plan was to take these folks somewhere and drop us off later. I was so irritated at the situation that I decided I would rather spend my day back on the ship than deal with the taxi consortium. My lesson learned here was to either book a Royal Caribbean excursion that takes to St. John or prearranged private transportation to the ferry area. Number four on our list is Kennedy Space Center. No, don't worry. I love Kennedy Space Center. I'm not here to tell you that it's a bad idea. In fact, I loved it because when I was on Anthem of the Seas, we did our first visit to Kennedy Space Center in Port Canaveral, Florida, and it was amazing. The issue was how I chose to get there. So as I mentioned, we sailed on Anthem of the Seas from New York and had a port stop in Port Canaveral. I don't remember why, but when we decided to visit Kennedy Space Center, I was fixated on finding a Royal Caribbean shore excursion to take us there. Kennedy Space Center is a very short distance by car from Port Canaveral, and I'll be honest, I have no idea why I didn't just take a taxi over there. We got to the Space Center without any problems and had a fabulous time, but we wasted a lot of time with the bus. I had booked the Kennedy Space Center Express Tour through Royal Caribbean, which was not a guided tour and would simply drive us to the entrance and then give us a time to return back. Part of my mistake was assuming five hours at Kennedy Space Center was going to be too much time and I'd run out of things to do. The reality was it was the opposite. I wish I had an extra five hours because it was incredible to visit there. So had I just taken a taxi to Kennedy Space Center or a Lyft or an Uber for that matter, we could have squeezed out another hour or two from our day rather than relying on Royal Caribbean transportation. So there's the lesson learned. And finally, my last shore excursion mistake was going to Mr. Sancho's in Cozumel. And my most recent shore excursion goof was spending the day at Mr. Sancho's Beach Club in Cozumel. Now, this is not my first time there. I've been there before, but we decided to go back post-pandemic, see what it was like. And within a half hour of arriving, that little voice in my head started saying, this is a mistake. And I tried my best to enjoy the day, but it was really a disappointment. It's my opinion that Mr. Sanchez's popularity seems to have led to one of the faux pas of any beach spot, overcrowding. They clearly had sold every single chair at the resort, and I found it to be overcrowded and, in my opinion, unenjoyable. The wait staff were great. I had no problems with my staff at all, but I found it disappointing how busy things were because it felt like we're all pushed together a little too much. Making matters worse was the food, which came out overcooked and just wasn't up to standard, especially considering that we're in Mexico. I'm not getting great food. I know Mr. Sanchez is a beach resort that a lot of people have enjoyed over the years, but in my opinion, based on my experience, I thought it paled in comparison to many other beach days in Cozumel. Now, before we get going, I do have one more recommendation. That's actually to avoid tours that go to Walt Disney World. This is not based on personal experience, but just a word of caution. A lot of people that visit Port Canaveral for the day are tempted to book a short excursion that takes them to Walt Disney World in nearby Orlando or even Universal Studios. We'll put that out there as well. It's an hour-long drive from the port to Orlando and seems like a great idea for a day visit. The problem with this idea is how incredibly expensive a one-day pass is to the parks along with the timing. Because your cruise ship arrives much later than when the theme parks open for the day, compounded by the fact that it will take you time to disembark and then get drive to the parks, you'll have a very limited window of time to enjoy what Disney has to offer. Moreover, because you have to be back on board the ship much sooner than theme parks close, there's just no way you're going to get your money's worth from a day visit. If you want to experience Disney World with a cruise, your best bet 
is to do a land vacation before your cruise for a few days and then book a short weekend cruise on Royal Caribbean to recuperate from all that walking around. So there you have it. There are my five, well, it's really six, I guess, cruise ship shore excursion mistakes that I instantly regretted. Let me know in the comments below which tours have you done that you really knew off the bat that you made a terrible mistake. I can't wait to commiserate together in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCarbonBlog.com. We'll talk again real soon.